Okay, so in these three videos I'm going to make, I'm going to be introducing you to Maya, uh, so we can get our feet in it a little bit, kind of get used to using it as a software, uh, introduce ourselves to some of the ways that Maya works and some of the terminology, the basic stuff. And then hopefully when we get into class, we'll be a little bit more kind of warmed up to it. And we won't have as much of a steeper learning curve as um, 3D tends to have. Uh, so this is a bit of pre-homework. So I know we're all going to do this, so I shouldn't need to ask this, but you really need to be looking at this before we jump into Maya and getting used to what we're going to be going over. Okay, <clears throat> so the first time you open up Maya, you're probably going to look at something, see something like this. Um, obviously, mine looks a little bit different with all these files here because this is stuff that I've done. Um, but if you've used Maya in the past, it might look a little bit different. But all you've got to do to actually get Maya working to get us into the actual screen, our working space, is just click New on the left-hand side. And then we're in Maya. So this is what Maya looks like as a standard kind of setup. Um, in this video, what we're going to be going over is uh, UI, some of the things to look out for inside the UI, uh, and some areas around the screen, and then also some stuff we can ignore because it's, there is quite a lot of stuff inside Maya that we'll never actually use or unless you start looking into animation and visual effects or anything that we won't be covering in class, then that might be, uh, become important to you. But we're actually going to be using a very small amount of Maya to do what we're going to be doing in class. So, okay. Starting off, this is our main uh, screen for Maya. We're going to go to the very, very top first and work our way down. Uh, at the very, very top, you've just got some drop-down menus. Um, the simple stuff is going to be like file. This is just like our new scene. This is a scene. Our workspace is a scene. Like new scene, open scene, save scene, save scene as, that kind of stuff. We've seen quite a lot of other things import, export, we can also send stuff to a Unity project or an Unreal project if we're using it. And then we've also got stuff like uh, the recent files we've just been working on, recent projects which we'll be going over and stuff. Um, I'm also not going to be going into super deep detail about what's inside these menus because I don't want to overload uh, with a bunch of information. But uh, all these menus also have information relevant to what we need them for. So the very, the very front on the left hand side, you can have some menus here like uh, file, edit, create, select, modify, display, and windows. These will never change. Everything from here, from like mesh all the way down, these are all to do with our modeling tools. So mesh, edit mesh, mesh tools, mesh displays. This is all to do with poly modeling, which is going to be 90% of what we're going to be doing. There's also some other stuff to do with um, surfaces and deformation, which we'll look into as, as, we, as and when we need them. But um, one thing I want to point out as well is Maya is color coded with quite a lot of what it has. Um, anything to do with poly modeling is often orange and white. As you can see, this is our poly modeling shelf, which we'll unlock in a second. But these are all orange. All these little menus here, when you drop them down, all they're all going to be orange. Some of them I will admit are going to be blue, but these are to do with curves or surfaces or deformation, which is purple. And these are all different ways of modifying our surfaces. It, but it still kind of relates to poly modeling, but again, don't worry about it too much. Okay, so a lot of drop down menus at the top. Now, there's so much that we can do inside Maya that we can't contain everything into just the top shelf here. Sometimes we need to go into do say like, rigging or visual effects or something. So we need to actually change this top menu set to correspond to what we need. Very, very easy. We're just going to come down one little layer down to this next kind of level, and all the way to the left hand side, which says modeling. We drop the down little drop down menu, and then we've got rigging, animation, effects, rendering, and customize. If we just change that to something like rigging, you're going to see that all these menus up here change. So now we've got skeleton, skin, deform, constraint, control, all the kind of jazz. And if you go for each one of these, you're going to see that it all changes. That's because there's so much stuff we can have access to that inside this top menu here is more prudent to have these little subgroups. But we'll be staying in modeling for. 99.9% .9 of everything we're going to do. Um, on this same kind of row here, we've got just some quick access menu stuff. So we've got um, a quick access to, to new scene, open scene, save scene, and undo and redo. Um, there's a few little things that we don't need to be too worried about at the minute, like how we select. It kind of indicates how we're selecting objects. Um, this little group of magnets right here is interesting because we can turn, uh, we can basically magnetize stuff to certain things inside the scene. I'm going to have a look at that obviously further on. Oh, there's a few little magnets here. 
symmetry. Well, we'll drop down for symmetry there. Who I ever want to work symmetrically, as well as some rendering stuff here to do with like opening up a rendering scene, which we'll probably be looking at a little bit, uh, as it's always a good way to uh, present our work. Uh, so keeping on this row, I'm going to come all the way up to the right hand side. I've got a little cluster of menus up here on the right hand side. Um, the very top one where it says workspace, simplest thing is it just changes the layout of our screen. So depending on what you're doing, the, the team at Maya have decided that this is the optimal uh, screen space for XGen, or this is the optimal screen space for rigging. General will give you everything like that. Modeling standard will give you something like this. So it all changes ever so slightly, but it's just, it's just default layouts for the screen. So have that as you will. Just below that, we've got a couple of other things, a few, five other things. Uh, we've got a little quick access menus to other parts of the screen here. So this little hammering cube brings up a modeling toolkit menu. The one next to it, little T-posing dude, brings up a, a uh, way of creating a very, very basic rig for us. Then we've got the one in the middle, which for me looks like three little plugs, is our attribute editor, which we're going to look at in another video. And then we've got our tool settings. If our tools have any settings we can change, again, we're going to have a look at that in another video. And our channel box, which is here, which is, contains all the information about the object we have selected. So that's what these little five menus are. Now, if we jump down another row, we're going to have the shelf area. Now, these are little shelves which contain lots of tools. And again, there's a lot of stuff to look at here, but if we just pay attention to what's actually being described on the actual tool shelves at the top, so curves and surfaces, poly modeling, sculpting, rigging, animation, and pay attention to the colors as well. We can see everything's color coded, and really we don't know we don't need to come into many of these aside from poly modeling and maybe a bit of sculpting. Uh, but notice everything is orange here because these are directly related to things to do with polygons. Now you will see that there is some blue icons and there are some green icons. These are just, uh, one of them here, this one here is just a content browser. And these three are ways of just changing data on certain objects. And these three, the other on the right hand side, are to do with UVing, which is essentially uh, peeling the skin off an object. But as you can see, everything's orange. Now what these shelves are, are uh, little frequently used tools are the most commonly used tools that the people at Maya have decided they're gonna use, uh, which is true, because a lot of what's on these shelves is what we're gonna be using. Um, I'm going to look, look, look at these in another video in a little bit, but that's these shelves. Uh, and then we can actually make custom shelves. So you can actually, I used to have a shelf which only had my own personal kind of tools that I would use. And um, it means that I could only have, I had like one shelf that contained everything I ever needed to really use, which is very nice. Okay, so let's just go over this top section. The very very top we've got like little drop down menus which are guided by this little drop down menu here so everything if, if i've got modeling turned on here it means that all these have to be with poly modeling then we've got a, a little bit of quick access menu here to do with like rigging symmetry not rigging sorry rendering symmetry uh some new new scene open scene save scene kind of thing and then below that we've got our shelves which contain depending on what workflow we're doing contains lots of frequently used tools, but we were, we just want to stick in poly modeling for 99% of our stuff. Okay, cool. Now below that, we have our workspace general area. So I'm going to come to the total left-hand side of the screen first. All the way over to the left, we've got a, a few little, we've got six little icons here, four little icons here that I'm going to go over. Now this is where I'm going to bring up a notepad because I'm going to need a notepad just to write some of these down while we're working because this is one of the oops what is it one of the core fundamental things about um, about Maya and 3D modeling in general is the use of hotkeys. Um, now, the, obviously, if you use Blender, you're going to be familiar with like the concept of hotkeys. But hotkeys are basically just ways for us to speed up our workflows a little bit, ways to uh, access menus or access functions very, very quickly. Now, I'm not going to bombard you with a ton of hotkeys. In like compared to Blender, there aren't as many hotkeys as Blender. 
like the amount of hotkeys we've got in Mario is actually quite small, but the ones I'm going to show you are actually like really, really important. And it just makes our life a whole lot easier. So I'll leave this off the screen for a second. So on the left hand side of the screen here, we've got these six icons, these little blue and white icons. Going through the very top, this is just our selection. This is just a click select or a drag, a marquee box select. So very, very simple to understand. You click something, you select it. That's what this top icon here is. Now, if we hover over, we're also going to get like a little descriptor. Uh, but then in the top right hand corner of this little window, we've got a little queue. Now, that's our hotkey for this, our hotkey selection. So I'm just going to bring up my little notepad. I'm going to see for the select tool. Two is Q. So very, very important that we just familiarize, uh, familiarize ourselves with this. Now, underneath that, underneath our selection, is our lasso selection. So this is, sim this is similar to what you might have inside Photoshop or something. It's a lasso, which means you can actually draw out a shape. And it'll select stuff inside that. Now, the next one underneath that, and notice as well, this one doesn't have a hotkey assigned to it. Uh, and this one doesn't either. This one's very cool. I'm going to show you in, in uh, another video, but this is the paint selection. And this allows us to actually paint a selection on a surface, which is going to be very, very useful when we're doing more complex objects. But uh, just going over these three again at the very top, or if we press Q on the keyboard, Q on the keyboard, um, that's our select tool. Underneath there, we've got our lasso tool. Underneath that, you've got a paint select tool. So that's our just three selection methods. Underneath there, we've got the move tool. So this is how we can actually move objects around our scene. Again, I'm gonna hover over and we get a little uh, description box. And there we've got on top right is W. So W is our move tool hockey. Now notice it's right next door to Q. So QW looking good so far. Uh, you might hear me call this, or you might see it being called translate. So movement, like move and translate tool are the same thing. It's just different terminologies. Okay. So move tool, translate tool, it's a W. Underneath there, we've got the rotate tool. And if we hover over, that is E. So you can kind of see where this one's going, hopefully. Rotate tool is E. So Q, W, E. Next is our scale tool, which is S, oh sorry, R, not S at all, is R, so that our scale tool making things bigger and smaller, either uniformly or in different directions, that's R, so Q, W, E, and R, scale tool, R. So you'll hear me say this a lot, because one thing I want people to avoid doing is putting their hands on the lap or not having their hands on the keyboard, the left hand, or whatever they're going to be using the keyboard with. Um, you know, having your hand near Q, W, E, and R is incredibly important because that's just going to be quicker for you to access different menus and stuff, uh, like access your, your tools that you'd need. Okay, so Q, W, E, and R, those six right there. So select, lasso select, paint select, move, rotate, scale. Awesome. Now underneath there, we've got some ways of changing. I know we changed the layout of the screen over here but we can actually change the layout of our workspace here a little bit. So currently, and, and we're, we're talking about these uh, three icons here at the minute, currently we're in the like the single view. This is all it is, it's a single view. And in this case, we're in the perspective mode or perspective view. You can tell we're in perspective view because at the very bottom, it says persp for perspective. Now, if we just click on the one below it, you see these like little four black boxes and another black box, another box that turns it into the four view, which means we get four views we can play with. Uh, top right being perspective, top left being top, looking down the Y axis, bottom left being the front view and bottom right being the side view. Uh, now we can actually change these to be whatever we want. We can change these to be very, very um, useful for us. That's one great thing about Maya is we're not just locked into whatever's happening on these. We can actually change each one of these little viewports to be whatever we want. And then the last one is just a split view. So we get a single view and then our another single view. So very, very cool. Now, one thing I want to point out while we're looking at our views is on each one of these, you're gonna see that at the top of each one, you have a little icon group in here. 
some drop down menus and some little icons here now i don't want us to worry too much about what's going on here in this video um this is just to be aware that it's the same on each viewport we're going to kind of look into this a little bit in another video um now those are the three kind of preset views that might give us but again we can change these to whatever we want we, we can have three horizontally three vertically we can have two down here and one up here we can change the layout of our views really really easily so below that below our three view kind of presets is something called the outliner now it's been here the whole time this guy here it's called the outliner now what this is is just a list of what's happening in the scene so if i had a cube or a cylinder or a rig or whatever in the scene i'd have it all listed here now this is obviously a really good list of things to have in the scene so we can make sure we're keeping track of everything but it's also a really good way of uh, debugging a scene or seeing if the scene's been too busy with like a lot of uh, excess data all these kind of things like the outliner i tend to keep on 90 percent of the time i very rarely actually get rid of this this stays on all the time um and that's the left hand side now we have got a search command here we have got like a little maya icon down here these you can ignore these so that's the right hand side sorry the left hand side I'm going to come over and jump over to the right hand side now. Now, on the very right hand side of the screen, you'll see in the in the uh, in the recording, but you've just got to be aware of these because some people forget that they're actually there because they're kind of horizontal um, or vertical, I should say. Is just some little docked menus, and this relates to some stuff we saw before. So, if we're, when we were talking about these five menus at the top here, uh, the channel box. So it says here what it does. Select objects in the scene to view, edit, and set keyframes to channels, attributes, that kind of jazz. Uh, we've got the modeling toolkit, and then we should have the attributes editor there as well. So there. And we've got some dot menus there. So we're gonna go, go over these a lot more as time goes on. Now inside here as well, when we're in the channel box, the channel box has a display section here at the bottom. Uh, which effectively can work a little bit like our layers in Photoshop Raw, but they don't need to be stacked on top of each other. And if one's on top of the other, it means we can't see one of them either. So literally, there's, there's like little channels we can say, right, all my things to do with this, I'm going to put in there. And you can turn them on and off, and it's very fun. This is going to become really useful for us when we uh, do more kind of complex objects and scenes. And if you ever do characters, it's very useful to have different components of characters inside this area. Okay, so that's the right hand side, very, very simple. You can see that now that I've got my channel box selected there, the channel box icon here is blue, meaning we're, you know, we've got it selected. If I choose the attributes editor, you can see that now the attributes editor is now blue. And if I choose the modeling toolkit, the modeling toolkit is now blue. Now you can actually drag these off. If I click and drag that, I can now have that channel box off on its own. And if I want to, I can put it on a different monitor, whatever. So I'm just gonna place that back, let's bring it over and Place it back in. Uh, there we go. It takes a little bit of getting used to to move these menus around if you do accidentally drag them off. Okay, uh, now we're moving to the center. Now we've already kind of looked at this already, but this is our workspace. So we've looked at them a few times there. This is literally just where anything our scene is going to be. Currently we're set to perspective, but we can obviously have different views. We can move the camera to be a top view. So I'll do that. So don't worry how I'm actually doing this so far. We can have a front view, for instance, or looking down the front. Now, one thing as well you're going to see is, um, and I'll write this down as well. If anyone has used 3D software like uh, 3ds Max or Blender or even things like Unreal, uh, the axes are going to be different. Uh, and this doesn't mean that Maya is wrong. It doesn't mean the 3ds Max is wrong. There's just two different ways of calculating a Y axis or a Z axis. Uh, so in Maya, the Z axis the Z axis is our front, basically our forward, or the depth. The X axis is our side to side. The side to side looks. If things move in side to side, they move in the X axis. Y axis is up and down. Moving up and down. Now, in some softwares, the z-axis is actually the up and down, and the y-axis is actually the for, uh, the the depth. Um, 
it's not real well there is a real it's all kind of calculated ma mathematical approaches um some just use one thing some just use another but in maya we use it like this okay so like i said so let's keep that over there for a second just ingest that a second um so yeah we can change our viewports to be whatever we want so i can change this to currently we're in a front view i can change it to be a top view so i'm looking down the y-axis i can change it to be looking from the side there i can create cameras I can adjust the perspective um i can quickly change the background color up i guess i'll, I'll include this in here as well so it's uh control and it's b oh well i'll put this so if you press control and b you change the background like this so control and b sorry alt b not control b dave oh fumbling the video So the Alt key and B, so alternating backgrounds essentially. Alt and B, there you go. So I'm just holding Alt and pressing B. I'll leave that for a bit. Okay, so our workspace. So like I said, this is where we're gonna work. This is where all our objects are. And inside this particular place here, you've got your whatever camera you're looking down. You've got like a little like, guide to, you know, we're looking down the front axis here, we're looking down the top there. And then we've got like a little gimbal down here, which basically displays the axis as well. So we've got a nice little reference. This is a grid. This big mesh thing here is called a grid. Uh, and this is going to be very, very useful for us because this is how we can uh, make sure things are laid out properly, make sure we're being nice and strict with our measurements. Uh, by default, every one of these little squares is a centimeter. So this is a 24 by 24 centimeter grid. Um, which is important, especially if we want to work to bigger or smaller sizes. And we can change this size, and we can change the scale inside Maya to work on something different. But generally, we're just going to stick to centimeter. Okay. Now, that's all we're really going to be using. I know we've just gone over a load of stuff. I'm stuck in. It's already been 20 minutes. There's a lot of stuff we've gone over there, but there's a little bit of explanation inside there, and I can just try not to get overwhelmed with this. Because we are literally going to be, gonna, we're only going to be using a fraction of what Maya can actually do at the very beginning, and then we're going to be building upon what we uh, need to use as time goes on. A couple of things left is just uh, something that we're never going to use is the timeline at the very bottom. So this line down here is an animation thing. Um, it's to do with like you know if we're doing animation, we've got a uh, frame timeline down here. We've got a frame zone here, so we can say how many frames we're looking at. We've got our forward, backwards, and stuff there. It's kind of much and much, so we don't really need to worry about that too much. Now, what we do need to kind of be aware of, we don't need to be like super, super involved with it, but just be aware of is at the very, very bottom, you've got this Mel here. Mel and Python. If I click that, I can change it to Mel or Python. This is basically, you can write your own kind of macro codes inside Maya. If anyone has done any coding inside Mel or Python, they might be familiar with this kind of thing. So we can do some stuff inside there. We will never do stuff inside there, but you can do stuff inside there. But on the, uh, this bar here, to the right of it, this one, is where our, all our error messages are going to come up if any error messages do appear. And on the very right hand side, you've got this little white box which pulls up this, which is the script editor, which we can write our Mel and Python in if we needed to. So I can, if I knew what I was doing, I could type stuff in there. But the what? I use this for is if anyone breaks Maya uh, and stuff is going wrong, I can look at this uh, and I know what I'm looking at with this. I know what I'm looking at when I see all this. You know, I've been using Maya a very, very long time. So this is basically just what Maya's done since I've opened it or what I've done. So there's a lot of loading. I've not really done much to it, so there's not really that many inputs. But this is just something I might look at that might give me a um, a, a clue of what might be going wrong if, if your Maya's freaking out or keeps crashing or whatever. I can look in this and get an idea. Okay, so that's video one. Let's just go over again, very, very quickly, uh, what we've been looking at. The very top, we've got drop down menus. They are controlled by this little drop down menu. These are quick access menus here for stuff like rendering and symmetry. Below there, we've got our frequently used tools, depending on what kind of workflow we're using. Left hand side, we've got Q. We've got Q for our select tool, 
then our lasso select, paint select, and then we've got W for our movement tool, E for our rotate tool, and R for our scale tool. So W, E, R. And then we've got some uh, different viewport presets here that we can click through. Then we've got the outliner, which is this, which is basically our asset list of the scene. Then we've got some little dock menus on the right hand side, like channel box, attribute editor, modeling toolkit. And then at the bottom, we've got uh, some animation stuff. And then in the middle here, we've got our screen, our workspace. So a little bit to get through on there, but what I would recommend is just including these next two videos is just spend a bit of time to get used to how my looks and stuff work. Okay, cool. So in the next video, what we're going to be going over is a little bit of navigation, how to move around the scene, how to bring things into the scene as a very, very basic sense. And then just looking at some stuff like faces, edge and vertexes to try and get used to that kind of stuff. Okay, cool.